Well, hopefully you've already completed the binary ASK transmitter. And if so, you perhaps recognize the basic structure here. I'm showing my front panel controls, and then these were the hand-built sub-VIs to implement the various components of the amplitude shift keying transmitter. And on the output side, have some indicators here to show the time domain signal and the power spectrum. I'd like to preserve as much as possible of the front panel setup, but then do a parallel implementation with sub-VIs from the LabVIEW modulation toolkit. I want to do this in parallel to make it easy to compare the existing work with the new work and make sure that those, those both agree nicely. I'll begin by placing the four sub-VIs that are necessary to implement the ASK transmitter. After I've got these placed, I'll spend a little bit more time talking about each one. But these four sub-VIs will do the entire, entire job that's necessary here. Now this sub-VI generates the system parameters and you begin by selecting the modulation scheme. In this case we're doing MARI ASK or M level if you like. We need to specify the samples per symbol which defaults to 16 and then the number of levels. And it's defaulting to binary ASK right now. Now earlier I was just making the assumption that we were doing binary ASK and nothing else. So I'll begin by just generalizing this a bit and talking about symbol interval now and the symbol rate. Because with m -ary schemes we have the possibility of transmitting multiple bits per symbol. So I'll also call, call these now the symbol interval T sub S and the symbol rate R sub S. Thinking about the dimensionality here, seconds times hertz yields total number of samples per symbol. I'll form the product of these two and then send that to the input and I also want to make sure that I'm properly uh, selecting the data type to make this work. If I just wired it directly, we would see a coercion dot. So I note here that we have an integer 8, or 8-bit integer. And whenever possible, it's, it's good to either not have coercion dots or at least understand why, why they are there. I'll go ahead and place this numeric converter. I think I misspoke earlier. It was actually I32 and not I8. Generate filter coefficients. This is where we can apply our pulse shaping. So again, we have a number of different parameters to consider here. And it might be worthwhile to actually take a look at the detailed help. And of course, you can do that for any of these devices uh, that you're working with. And I, I'd encourage you to do that. So for specifically for ASK, we see that raised cosine is one of the options. And the filter parameter varies depending on which scheme you're choosing. So if you're choosing the raised cosine, then that, that turns out to be the same as the alpha that we have already specified as one of our front panel controls. So again, here's another place where we need to ensure that we have the given modulation scheme specified correctly.
and we can choose uh, several different pulse shaping strategies, including none. So we start to see that the samples per symbol becomes an important parameter for many of these sub-VIs. All right, I think we're at the point where we can start to get our modulation scheme and Multipl ultimately multiplication by carrier frequency, that's the up conversion block. The input stream and the ASK system parameters are important, as is the symbol rate, and then the pulse shaping co coefficients or filter coefficients that we established earlier. I'll go ahead and use the same bitstream generator And to establish the data type here, you see that's the 8-bit integer in this case. So we need to do the conversion in two steps. First, convert the Boolean data type into a 0-1 data type, and then convert that to the 8-bit integer data type. So I'm establishing the connections to our, our sub-VIs that establish the setup. Here is the symbol rate. All right. The uh, MT modulate ASK sub-VI turns out a complex baseband waveform and the up conversion then is responsible for uh, essentially modulating that up to the carrier frequency. And ultimately we have the waveform data type and I'm interested in seeing both the, the baseband signal as well as the modulated signal. I'll preserve the same order here. So the modulated signal goes on the bottom. Now in order to see the uh, baseband signal in a format other than, than the, the complex baseband, have a little utility here where you can fetch out the individual components. It's essentially extracting either the real or the imaginary part of that complex waveform. You could also extract the magnitude and the phase as well. We have two outputs on this one and the one that's of interest here is the one that's called the complex envelope or the CE signal. So overlapping the graphs is not necessarily the best practice, but I have rather limited space on the front panel, so I'll just do that temporarily. Well, that looks pretty good. Uh, the top graph is the original version from the from the old project and this is the new results from the LabVIEW modulation toolkit. You'll notice that the scaling is different between the two but that's not a big deal because ultimately this trans transmitter will be driving a speaker output. can confirm that pulse shaping works and in particular you might spot check a few of these places just to, to get a visual in indication that, for example, where we see the high-low high low pattern up here, 
that that is actually appearing down here as well. Looks good.